Hey there, Scorpio. Welcome to my channel, Autumn and the Mage. This is going to be a general message for Scorpio in regards to love. Uh, if you've been drawn to this video, then there may be a message here for you. Uh, but if the storyline itself does not fit, then please don't try to force it. Just take what resonates and leave the rest, as they say. So we're going to get started, Scorpio, with the Moonology Oracle deck. We're going to draw a card here for the overall an overall look at the situation between you and the person you're connecting with. Can we please get the overall the overall energy of this connection for Scorpio and the person they're connecting with? Your dreams need a practical plan, it says. Full moon in Taurus. Your dreams need a practical plan. Let's go ahead and read from the book what that says. Sometimes you need to weave a bit of magic, and sometimes you need to be practical, and sometimes you need to find a combination of the two. This card suggests that this is where you are now. You need to use the laws of attraction to draw in what you want, by imagining it, expecting it, and welcoming it. But you need to balance that with taking down-to-earth steps towards your goals. This isn't about wishing on the moon and hoping for the best. It's about making something like a list of bullet points about how to achieve your dreams. If you're asking about money, this card heralds a change of financial fortunes, depending on both your past actions and what you're expecting and therefore attracting. So, focus. It's kind of a card of manifest manifestation, right? But um, doing, taking the practical steps, like... Uh, suddenly I'm thinking of the three of wands, right? In the three of wands, we've, we've taken those steps and we've also planned out, we've also called on what we want energetically. And between those two things, we're drawing in what we want, right? So you're not, you're definitely not at the three of wands step yet. You still need to do those. You need to take those practical steps to, um, and you need to focus your energy. You're really being called to manifest, I feel like, is what that is saying. So can we please get, we're going to take a look now. This this deck here is called the True Black Tarot. Uh, and we're going to take a look at first how you feel about the person you're connecting with and then how they feel about you. Can we get three cards for how Scorpio feels in regards to this person and this connection? Interesting, the Two of Wands which is uh, that planning card, you know, having made a choice and trying to plan for the future, trying to draw, trying to plan how you'll draw that energy into you. Uh, can I get, okay. Can I get one more card for how Scorpio feels in regards to this person they're connecting with? One more card, please. How does Scorpio feel about this person they're connecting with? The next card we got was the Ace of Swords, and that's um, wanting to communicate something, but also it could be like having an like an aha moment, like a, an understanding of, of a situation. We're going to clarify it so we'll have more information. This is the Ace of Swords here. These cards are super pretty. They're like hand painted, and they, they have a weird texture to, to them too, like this it's kind of soft. It's really interesting. I love this deck and they're so pretty. But anyway, the Ace of Swords is about wanting to communicate some truth, some understanding. Okay. But it's also, it, like I said, can be like a, the light bulb coming on, like a sudden understanding. And then we get the Knight of Cups. This is having really an open heart towards somebody, you know, your heart is open to them. And you, you want to express that to them with the night. Let's go ahead and take a look at how they feel about you, and then we'll clarify. Okay. Can we please get three cards for how the person connecting with Scorpio feels about them? We get two right away. This is the destiny card, okay? 
It's called Destiny, but it's basically Wheel of Fortune. But with this deck, it, it really focuses on the fact that um, feeling like this is fate, okay? Feeling like this connection is definitely something that's meant to be. And really sometimes, uh, like with the Wheel of Fortune, we're questioning time. But with Destiny, it, it's just about knowing that um, things are brought into your life at a specific time for a certain reason. And, um, but definitely feeling like it's fate, like it's destiny. We also get the lover's card. Okay. Which, I mean, it's the lover's card. It's a soulmate energy. It's, um, it's like this, this destiny card feeling just drawn to someone in a way that you, uh, don't necessarily understand possibly, but very drawn to them, very connected to them, okay? Like there's more than just this, more than just this physical world connection. It's deeper than that, all right? It's also love. I mean, it's a lover's card. The lover's card can also represent choices in love, like in choosing to follow your heart. But as far as feelings go, I think it's pretty clear what the lover's card means. Can we get one more card for this person that's connecting with Scorpio? We get the Eight of Wands, and this is wanting forward movement. This is wanting to progress, wanting to move and communicate as well. This is a communication card, but it's wanting to move forward and progress forward. And then we also get the Four of Pentacles here, and this is this is holding on tightly to something. It can also be, it can also signif signify um, jealousy, okay? All of a sudden, I'm I'm noticing these these are these like butterflies. I don't know if they're butterflies or if they're moths. They might be moths. And there's like a spider web up there. That's interesting. For some reason, I was thinking they were butterflies, and I really associate butterflies with Scorpio, um, because Scorpio energy is about death and rebirth. And with the butterfly, they they are reborn when they come out of their cocoon, you know, and it's about some aspect, not their life having ended, but some aspect of life or some aspect of a connection ending and then being reborn. Not that that is what this card says at all. <laughs> I just got, kind of got focused on that for a second there. But anyway, the four of pentacles, that's holding on tightly to something. And like I said, it can be feeling rather jealous. Like if they feel like, um, you're getting a lot of attention, possibly. It could be them feeling possessive. That's the word I'm thinking, possessive. That could be possessive energy right there. But we will clarify for more details. Um, sorry, I'm kind of crazy about the cards like being laid out in a way that is not totally crooked. And I'm not very good at doing it all the time, so... We're going to clarify now with the Prisma Visions Tarot deck. Uh, we're going to take a look first at your Two of Wands. There's definitely, I mean, on both sides, there's a lot of love and and, and um, expression wanting to come through here. So I feel like this is a positive connection that you're in here. Um whether you are already together and trying to build on this existing relationship or if you're trying to come together with them. Either way, so far, really just that focusing on what you want and manifesting it is what you're being uh, advised to do. But let's take a look here at this Two of Wands. Please clarify the Two of Wands for Scorpio. Oh, did cards flip there? No. They didn't. They just fell weirdly. Okay. Please clarify the two of wands for Scorpio. The chariot, which is cancer energy, by the way. Uh, but the chariot, that's having chosen a course of action and just kind of um, holding on, right? You're, you've committed to a path and you're holding on regardless of what you, what you meet on the path. Like, 
if it's bumpy, if it's windy, if it's whatever it is, you're holding on tightly and you're going to continue down this path. So the, with the two of wands, I really look at that as a decision having been made. Okay. And the chariot is as well. Like it's having made a choice and being dedicated to that choice. So you definitely feel dedicated to this connection. You feel dedicated to this person and dedicated to the future that you want with them. Let's take a look at that Ace of Swords. Please clarify the Ace of Swords for us. What is this Ace of Swords? Please clarify the Ace of Swords for Scorpio. Nine of Pentacles and the Hanged Man. So in the Nine of Pentacles... Um, we have, this is about self, okay? Uh, and if you're looking at this person and seeing them as the Nine of Pentacles, then you see them as having uh, having everything that they need in the tangible world, in the material world, except that connection with someone, okay? So if you're not in a connection and you see them that way, then this could be wanting to communicate, Okay, but the hanged man isn't doing that. They're not communicating. They're the hanged man is not doing is not moving forward in any way at all. Okay, but I also see this as self. Okay, the nine of pentacles can be um, the the version. It it can be about working on ourselves. Okay, and trying to achieve this nine of pentacles, and um but not really knowing how to do that, okay? So it's possible that you're in this connection and you're both very dedicated to it, but maybe maybe in addition to this connection, you're wanting to work on yourself and you're just not sure how to accomplish that while also feeding into this connection. Um, we're going to clarify more so we can look into it more, but I feel like that might be what this is. You wanting to communicate a desire to work on self, uh, not necessarily a desire to be single, okay? Even though the Nine of Pentacles is a single card, but definitely a desire to, it's also just like an independent card, you know? And sometimes, uh, well, in healthy relationships, we have the ability to be committed and also independent, you know? And so I think that's what you want to communicate with this person is working on those those on yourself more or less okay but you do feel a lot of love for them it's not like you don't want to stop feeding this relationship because with the knight of cups here you definitely want to continue having an open heart towards them and communicating that to them let's clarify that knight of uh, please clarify that knight of cups for how scorpio feels Please clarify the Knight of Cups for how Scorpio feels. Okay. Well, we get the Tower. And this is sudden and unexpected change, okay? It can also represent a fear of change, okay? Uh, we get the Four of Wands, which is a celebration of a celebration of a union. This is soulmate energy here. This is this is a connection, and uh, I the word unity just keeps coming to my mind, but it's definitely uh, it can be a marriage card, okay? But it's something that was started properly it's being built on the proper foundation okay and the celebration of that something and then we get the world and I feel like this is um I feel like this is a fear a fear of causing like causing stress to this connection and and with the world card, we're ending a cycle to start a new cycle. 
You know, I've never seen this before, but like right in the middle there, it almost looks like eyes looking back at us, doesn't it? It almost looks scary. Like something evil and out there or scary in the darkness. How do I make this focus? I bring it close enough. There we go. Can you see that? I mean, the world card is not a bad card at all. It's definitely a good thing. It's positive for sure. But uh, yeah, I feel like there's some fear here that you're worried about uh, disrupting, about this change, like causing uh, disruption to the peace that you have in this connection. And you really want to express that that your heart that you're still that you still feel this love, this heart. I just can't see past the, those creepy eyes. <laughs> I really do feel like this is fear of change almost. Like you definitely want to keep this connection together. And if you're if you're trying to manifest something for yourself. Um, you can also continue to manifest love and connection, you know, in this relationship. Let's take a look at the destiny card, the, the wheel of fortune for how this person feels about Scorpio. That's too many cards. It's like a whole book right there. Can you please tell us more about this destiny card? We get the seven of cups here, which is a card of confusion, okay? And can be a card of choices. Okay, we also get the lover's card again and the king of wands. Um, the lover's card is Gemini energy, by the way. I don't think I mentioned that, so you might be dealing with the Gemini, but... Um, the King of Wands is a uh, fire sign, so that's Aries, Leo, or Sagittarius, but this is just very passionate and, um, and, um, like confident, very magnetic sort of energy, okay? And with the destiny, they feel this connection is, it's meant to happen, it's meant to be. But sometimes we're questioning like the timing of things, okay? Uh, and with the Seven of Cups here, I don't think this is about choice. I don't think that they have many choices in love or something along those lines. I feel like this card is definitely representing confusion in regards to this connection. They feel this destiny, um, and I, I can't, I'm not really sure what they would be confused about. Let me, let me take a look at this for a second here. The Lovers and the King of Wands. This might, this might just be their energy, like wanting to express that passion and that, um, that inspiration, that drive to like move towards this relationship and keep this relationship going. It's the seven of cups. That's really, uh, sometimes what, you know what, sometimes what the seven of cups can do is, uh, it, what it can represent is having a um, an unrealistic idea or vision of something, okay, because it, it kind of indicates like having your head up in the clouds and not seeing reality, and it's possible that they are, they're like putting this connection up on a pedestal. They feel that this is destiny, and they're definitely like ri raising you and this, um, love. I mean, it's soulmate energy. The lover's card has come out twice here. This person definitely feels like you are the one and they're very committed to that. Um, but yeah, with the seven of cups, really the only, there's either some confusion here for them about timing or about, um, some aspect of destiny, or they are just really putting you up, putting this relationship up on this pedestal. They believe it's everything. They believe it's it was meant for them and it is their destiny. And so they're, they're holding up it. They're holding it very highly in that way. Let's take a look at that lover's card. 
Please clarify the lover's card. Please clarify the lover's card for how this person feels about Scorpio. Four of Swords, which is a card of, it's a card that, it can be a card of healing, but it's also a card of like not moving, okay, and about planning sort of. And then we get the Three of Pentacles, um, which is about building something together, building a foundation. The Three of Pentacles is really collaborating together to build on something. And they definitely feel, like I said, like you're their soulmate. They feel very strongly about this connection. They think it's what is meant to be. They think it's their meant to be for them. And the Four of Swords, it can be about healing, like I said, but it's also just about, it's not moving, physically not moving, and planning for the future. In in the Four of Swords, generally, there's like a soldier um, or a knight laying flat and he's got a sword on his chest and then three swords on the wall and over here there's like a stained glass image of like a family and it's like they're planning towards that um, and with the three of pentacles it might actually be family that they're shooting for here with the three of pentacles uh, I don't know why all of a sudden but I'm seeing like two become three kind of thing so possibly that's what they want to build towards with you but and, and they're planning out how to do that, okay? Um, but they are definitely planning on having this collaboration with you, having this, building this something with you, having this this foundation, this strong foundation, and building on that. All right, let's clarify that Eight of Wands, which is communication. It's them wanting to express something to you, right? And forward movement, wanting to move forward in this connection. Let's clear, oh, the magician, which is manifesting six of swords. Uh, six of swords is a card of travel. So it might be like an actual trip or moving somewhere together. Um, the six of swords is also totally just left my mind, but whatever it was I was going to say. But with the six of swords, it's wanting to move into calmer waters, wanting to move out of chaos into calm or wanting to move out of like fog into like clarity into into the clear so they're manifesting this forward this movement this eight of wands is forward movement as well but this is also expressing that and like wanting to communicate with you perhaps that they're trying to manifest maybe a move they might part of this um three of pentacles here part of what they might be they, they definitely feel like you and them are um, meant to be, like we said multiple times here. The magician, by the way, is Gemini and Virgo energy. You might be dealing with a Gemini or Virgo. Gemini's come up now several times with the lover's card coming up twice, but it's all just energy, really. But with the magician, uh, I feel like they're com they want to communicate to you that they're trying to move move you forward. They're trying to um. They're trying to either move, like I said, to another location with you, or they're trying to move um, things into clarity. They're trying; they want to definitely want to open up their thoughts to you and um, and express those to you and be out in the open and honest and clear. Okay. So that's what that, all of a sudden, I'm sorry that I got all stumbled there, but I was just thinking here that the world card can be move. It can be like moving. And it may be that you fear um, that you want to continue to move forward with love in this connection, but it may be that you fear that you're going to, um, that by staying, committing, like staying in this connection, staying in this commitment, that you'll have to like move somewhere that just came to mind. I mean, it might not resonate with you. It might, it just entered my brain because the world card can indicate travel. It can indicate relocation. Let's take a look at that four of pentacles. Please clarify 
the Four of Pentacles for me. That's weird. Okay, we get the Devil card. Okay, and remember how I said that the Four of Pentacles can be holding on too tightly to something, can be, um, uh, what, what was the word? Not jealousy, but possessiveness, right? It can be feeling very possessive of you. And I feel like the devil card is another indication of that. Like with the devil, it's, it, it's very, like, I mean, If we're being controlled by the devil, okay, that, that the devil possesses us, do you know what I mean? And it has control over us and wanting that control. But also, the devil is just obsession, okay? And it may be that they are very possessed, possessive and obsessive over you, okay? The devil energy can be really toxic. It's not always... The devil, by the way, is... Um, Capricorn energy, so you might be dealing with the Capricorn, but it is very obsessive, okay? And then we have the Eight of Cups and the Temperance card, and they might realize that they need to walk away from this energy. With the Eight of Cups, this is letting go of something so that you can move forward. Um, some look at this as walking away from a relationship, but I really don't see it that way. In the Eight of Cups, we're not like giving it, we're not like giving up, we're just letting go of things that are no longer serving us things that things that we once cared about a great deal but we recognize are now toxic okay it's now toxic and so wanting to walk away from that and temperance is a card of of time and patience and healing um and i feel like i really feel like they are very possessive <laughs> And obsessive over you and they I think they they realize that they need to let that energy go um, and they're trying to work towards that with temperance it's about needing time to make something happen you know I think that they're working towards that overall this person's very connected they're very committed to you and but I think that there's possibly that you're possibly hoping for two different things to come not you both definitely want to be in this connection for sure but like i said that i feel like there's maybe a, a desire to work on self over here and over here there's a desire to uh, build more in this connection and you can both you can do both things you can have both things you can both have what you want and make it work but like it says here you need you need to folk you need to figure out you need to think about practical steps to make that happen so that you can have what you need in this and they can have what they need in this let's go ahead and get some advice cards here we're going to start with the queen of the moon oracle deck these images are super pretty can we get um, advice for Scorpio in regards to this connection? Can we get advice for Scorpio? In regards to this connection? It, it says fear. The card here that comes up is fear. It's card number 11. Interesting. I'm going to read the card to you and show it to you just a second, second, just a second. <laughs> Here it is. Fear. Oh, wow. Look at it. She's like balled up in there. Do you see her? And there's all of this. Um, birds represent air energy, which represents our thoughts. And it's like she's letting her mind um and her fears like pull her around almost that's interesting it's an interesting artwork there the time for courage is here fear is only useful if it teaches you something you must examine whether your fears are old or new useful or unhelpful fear blocks flow if there's one thing that stops people from fulfilling their dreams or even getting things done 
that they want done, it is fear. Experiencing fear is built in, a chemical part of the way our brain works to protect us. Emotions such as fear cause the production of a whole raft of body chemicals that give us the best chance of coping with situations that need our attention to survive. There is a healthy kind of fear, the kind that warns us to keep out of dangerous situations or stay clear of someone who instinctively makes us wary. However, it would be a rare person who does not have at least one fear that does not serve them, a fear that is unrealistic or untrue or perhaps based on an out moded experience, outmoded experience, or something that is buried so deeply we only see the symptoms rather than the fear itself. Most fears have been formed with a positive intent of protection. We need to separate that intention out and deal with it in a more resourceful and less destructive way if we are to create ease and flow in our lives. Fear has many names. Covert ones are envy, jealousy, codependency, procrastination, bullying, people, pleasing, disconnection, sorry. <laughs> envy, jealousy, codependency, procrastination, bullying, people pleasing, disconnection. More overt ones are avoidance, fear of failure, or fear of success. There is, however, a kind of antidote to fear, and it is courage. Fear will put up an initial resistance to courage, but has no real long-term power against it. While we can be fearful and courageous at the same time, and I think courage contains a mighty big dose of fear, we can choose to face that fear and flow through it until we fear less and then eventually become fearless. The process isn't always graceful. It isn't always impressive because it may be slow and deliberate steps we take. Taking these steps isn't always easy, an understatement. It isn't always apparent to others, so it should be about us measuring how far we have come and not worrying about what anyone else thinks. Comparison is useless. Courage is powerful no matter what form it takes. Uh, so yeah, you're being called to have courage to, and don't be afraid to chase your dreams. We, we saw here that there's fear. There is some fear here for you with that tower card. I really feel like that is fear coming through. And, uh, but the, you're, you're being called to be courageous, like embrace your courage and let it, in, in some cases we have to teach ourselves to be courageous, right? In some cases we have to teach ourselves to, um, to push the fear aside. Let's get one more card here. We're going to get a card from the Witch's Oracle. The Witch's Oracle. Can we please get one card for Scorpio in regards to this connection? Can we please get advice for Scorpio? Please. Uh, it's Atame. Let me read to you what it says in the book. Okay. The message of this card suggests that while you have the ability to see both sides of any of the issues or problems that you are facing at this time, you are choosing to be very one-sided and are only seeing what you want to see rather than digging deeper for the answers that will allow the situation to be resolved once and for all. It has been dragging on far too long. As the sword has a double edge, so do most things, and the duality of dark and light, good and bad, that balances our universe. Oh, it's the duality of dark and light, good and bad, that balances our universe. One cannot survive without the other. You must now open your mind to all possibilities and look into both sides of the situation to get the information that you are seeking. That is where you will ultimately find the truth. So you can't be afraid. And I feel like you're being called to communicate with this person uh, what, your, what your hopes are, what your desires are, and try to find a balance between the two of you. Try to find a balance between what they want and what you want. Maybe per perhaps you're focusing so much on what you want, and uh, I think you're afraid to communicate that to them, but 
if you also focus on what they want, um, then you can communicate with them more, um, more openly, okay? It, it allows for uh, a sort of freedom between the two of you. But anyway, these cards here give you an incantation, which they suggest that you read. You read it, that you say out loud three times. So uh, the incantation for this particular card says, front and back, up and down, side to side, and all around. Open my eyes to all that is there and allow my judgments to be entirely fair. So I'm going to read that one more time. Front and back, up and down, side to side, and all around. Open my eyes to all that is there and allow my judgments to be entirely fair. So yeah, I mean, you're. I feel like you're being called to um, see their side, okay? You need to build practical. a practical plan is what you're being advised there. And so um, don't let your fear hold you back. What you want is is completely possible and um, and it, you shouldn't be afraid to chase after what you want but you definitely uh, in this connection need to find that balance so be open to what they want like be open to considering it I keep my mind keeps going back to another deck I have called notes from the universe and it, they talk about there's a card there that talks about how uh, wanting to change somebody Okay, when you when you want to change somebody, first off, asking for change, if, if they did, in fact, give you that change, you have no idea how they're going to change. If you try to force that on somebody, they may change in a way that is different than what you wanted, trying to force change on somebody. It is wiser to go towards them with an open mind and like really being willing to understand from their perspective. When we approach somebody with that being fully open in that way and really seeking to understand instead of seeking to judge and manipulate, they respond, they open up. If you approach them open, then they will, and you remain open, okay, then they will open up to you as well. And I think that you are just being encouraged to do that, communicate with each other for sure. And find that balance and plan those practical steps so that you can both have what you want. You're both very, I feel, dedicated to this connection. You want to stay in this connection, but you, um, yeah, I feel like there's some goal here that doesn't necessarily align here, but, but that doesn't mean you can't both have what you want. So definitely talk it out. And I'm just rambling. So I'm sorry. Thank you so much for watching this. This is really all that I have for you, uh, at this time, but thank you so much. For watching i i really i really really appreciate it it means a great deal to me so thank you um also if this i hope that this resonates and uh, provides you with some kind of clarity and if it did and you wouldn't mind sharing i would love to hear about that you could post a comment below or you could shoot me an email my email address is in the description box but either way please move forward with hope and with positive thoughts because we create what we think and we draw in what we believe we can have so start with hope and let that build into faith that you can have what you want because you really can so be positive think positive and um, open up with this person communicate and that's all that i have thank you again so much scorpio i hope you have a great day and i hope i see you again back here soon